Good morning. I am Ty Blakely, the mayor of the city of Maynardville. I am here at your Maynardville library. I'm going to read to you today, Rudolph Shines Again by Robert L. May, illustrated by Lisa Papp. Let's get started. T'was a month before Christmas when Rudolph at play saw Santa drive up to call from his sleigh. The weatherman says there'll be snow Christmas Eve, so please tell your parents I'd like you to leave. To lead all my dear through the dark snowy night with your shining red nose and its wonderful light. Meanwhile, of course, you can work on the toys. We'll be taking this Christmas to good girls and boys. As Rudolph was hitched up in front of the rest, he heard the deer whisper, What makes him the best? We're bigger and stronger and older. You said it, but we get the backaches while he gets the credit. The deer in the workshop were mean to him too. They gave him the messiest gluing to do. He carried the heaviest loads of them all, and when football was played, they made Rudolph the ball. Poor Rudolph, he worried, he wept, and he whined. And the more he shed tears, the less his nose shined. Oh, poor little me, he would pity and pout, till one day, the light in his nose, it just went out. With this nose, I never could lead Santa's sleigh. I'm useless here now, so why should I stay? I'll leave here tonight while the rest are in bed and go to some faraway country instead, where none of the new folks who'll be introduced to me know how much brighter my nose really used to be. He left and he traveled for mile after mile, till one day, when ready to rest for a while, in a field with a very thick forest behind it, he heard a strange noise. But he just couldn't find it, until he came close for darkness was falling. Hundreds of rabbits were crying and calling. Two of our children, Donnie and Doris, taking a walk, got lost in the forest. It's much too dark now to search or to follow them. By morning, a fox or a wolf will have swallowed them. If only we rabbits had eyes like a cat or a bright shining flashlight, we sure could use that thought Rudolph, these rabbits have reasons to worry. I'd better stop pitying me in a hurry. And right then and there, Rudolph ended his habits of pouting and tears and thought just of the rabbits. I'll find them, he shouted. I'll find Donnie and Doris with my bright shining nose. And he dashed for the forest. Completely forgetting himself and his woes, He'd even forgotten the change in his nose because he was running as fast as he could when he learned his mistake. He was deep in the wood. He now faced the risk of that dangerous place with a nose no more bright than the one on your face. I promised the rabbits their babies I'd save. I may have been stupid. I've got to be brave. My nose doesn't shine, but like all the other deers, it's still a good sniffer. I still have sharp ears. Quickly and quietly, he ran through the forest, sniffing and listening for Donnie and Doris, and sniffing, sniffing and listening, too, for the sly foxes and wolves that he knew were close by. With all that huge forest to search without light, do you think that Rudolph will find them that night? Perhaps it was smartness, perhaps it was luck, or perhaps a reward for his bravery and pluck was sent by an angel from way, way up high who steered Rudolph's feet toward a very small cry from a thick patch of bushes, and that's where he found them, frightened but safe, with leaves piled around them. To keep out the cold and wild animals too, I'm your friend, Rudolph whispered. I've come here for you to help you get home, so please have no fears. Just jump on my back and hold tight to my ears. The foxes and wolves here 
would all like to meet us in order to cook us and carve us and eat us. <clears throat> so Rudolph bent down and the bunnies obeyed. He then ran so fast that no animal laid a claw or a tooth on the bunnies or deer, though two panting wolves came just terribly near. Then out of the woods for a grand happy landing in the field where the crowd of sad rabbits were standing. Just picture the mother and dad rabbit's joy when Rudolph brought back both their girl and their boy. They asked, they thanked him and thanked him and begged him to stay. Said Rudolph, I'll come for a visit someday. But my job is with Santa to help as I can. I was wrong to go away from that wonderful man. Perhaps it was cause of my weeping and whining that all of a sudden my nose stopped its shining. With a dull nose last night in the woods, I helped you in that case. I surely could help Santa too. As Santa's front reindeer, I guess I'm all through, but I still could load boxes or walk, work with the glue. As tears from the rabbit's eyes started to roll, he started his trip to the far off North Pole. Before this remarkable journey was through, t'was the day before Christmas, and darker it grew. The gray northern sky and the fog and the snow would make almost anyone travel quite slow, or even get lost. But Rudolph just flew, straight as an arrow, and speedily, too. Through the brave, through the heaviest snowstorm and fog of the season, how did he do it? Can you guess the reason? Ever since Rudolph had saved the young rabbits, forgetting himself and ended his habits, of thinking of Rudolph and weeping and whining, the light in his nose had again started shining. At First, very little to dimly to view it. Do you think that the angel had something to do with it? Then slowly, more bright, like a red glowing coal, until, when at last, he could see the North Pole. And Santa's big sleigh by the workshop front door, it shone just as brightly as ever before. The deer were all hitched, the sleigh almost loaded, and Santa so worried he nearly exploded. Without Rudolph's red nose and its wonderful glow, how will I steer through the fog and the snow? But when he saw Rudolph, he shouted, Hooray! Quick, take your place at the head of the sleigh. The deer crowd called, Rudolph, we deer are glad too. We hope you forgive the big loads and the glue. For the next year, your job in the shop is a dandy. Next year, your job will be tasting the candy. So happy young Rudolph led Santa's great sleigh with Rudolph's red nose again. It's lighting the way through darkness and fog to deliver the toys that were given that Christmas to good girls and boys. Swiftly they traveled as Rudolph's nose shone on each waiting chimney, including your own. The very first sound you could hear on the roof as Santa's sleigh landed was Rudolph's small hoof. Then his nose made the light that gave Santa a view of you and your room and when they were through. You might too have heard as they drove out of sight. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Merry Christmas.